What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. In this video we are jumping into Once and Future issue number 7. With our first story arc finally coming to a close, we are jumping into what comes next. Exploring much of Arthurian lore, we are about to branch out and go in a different direction. While holding on to the main concepts of the first story arc, we are about to expand and go into bigger lore, bigger mythology, making this story even that more much interesting. Now, make sure you guys have subscribed to the channel, Make sure that you like this video, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we jump into this new story arc, it is starting us off in Camelot in Otherworld. We have Arthur, who is asking for one to come forward. He has received a dark message. An old rival of his will soon stalk the land, saying that the Saxons must be buried before they can rise up again. He has a quest for a knightly man. Of course, the perfect knight, Galahad, steps forward. He wants so badly to prove himself to King Arthur. His blade has been sworn to duty. He wants nothing more than to prove his worth. This is when Arthur challenges him with a question. That if you are to be my perfect knight, would you risk sitting in the Siege Perilous? Galahad knowing that only the greatest of knights can sit in the Siege Perilous and live. Galahad being the greatest of knights, he believes that he can sit in it. With him sitting down, there seems to be no problem. But that is when Siege Perilous grabs a hold of him. Thorns coming out of his skin, his skin beginning to boil, and Arthur letting him know that if he is the greatest knight, he will be able to survive this and he will go on to sit by Arthur's side. That is what picks us up in Cornwall. Duncan currently just killing a pixie. His phone rings and this is Gran. The two of them, they're still not on good terms, but he does talk to her because she has a girth of information. With Gran asking Duncan if she can really expect a visit soon, he stutters, he hesitates, but that is when Rose is calling him, saying that he's gotta go, he gets on the phone with Rose, Rose currently in Bristol. She is called to check in and ensure that he is at least almost finished with the job that he is doing. She is calling because there is another job. Now what Rose does, she puts down a map and she grabs some needles. When she put these needles down onto the map, she does it almost as if she is just dropping it and watching it fall into place. Where the needle lands, this is where something is trying to cross over from other worlds. And right now, there are at least a dozen needles in one location. That location is the British Museum in London. With Rose getting him access and some privacy, telling him good luck, we pick up later that evening with Duncan making his way inside the British Museum. Now, he had always kind of hoped that he could come to this place and be here completely alone. He never thought that this would be the reason why. As he goes to investigate using a crystal that is guiding him to wherever this breach may be, he makes his way through, and that is where he runs into an Anglo-Saxon helmet. As he stares and looks at it, it doesn't take long for Galahad to arrive. But Galahad, disformed, disfigured, looking as if he is some kind of monster from hell. With Galahad saying that he is the perfect knight, he draws out his sword and he attacks Duncan. Duncan barely being able to dive out of the way, he runs for cover. But meanwhile, nearby at the British Library, we have a book, a manuscript. Someone is looking at it, someone is breaking the glass, and they are taking it. It appears that whatever is going on with Duncan with Galahad, this is all the distraction for somebody to come steal this manuscript. Picking back up with Duncan and Galahad, we have the arrival of Gran. 
our gun-toting, smoking grandma has shown up on site, and she is ready to lay down the hate. Giving Duncan the opportunity to make a getaway, making this distraction, Galahad mounts his steed and he charges full speed at Gran. What he doesn't see is the silver tripwire. This not only cuts the horse in half, but we also see Galahad's legs, they are taken from him. Having nothing but stumps bleeding out all over the ground, we see him disappear and he goes off to other worlds. The problem solved, or at the very least, it has been delayed for the time being. With Duncan coming over to Gran and asking what the heck she is doing here, Gran simply couldn't let him go out here do all of this by himself. Duncan getting a phone call, this is Rose making sure that everything has been taken care of. But there are also some more complications. Letting him know about the break-in at the British Library. That they had stolen a manuscript. She is beginning to get a trace. Gran recognizing how clever this situation was. Usually these plans aren't so thought out. Usually these plans aren't so prepared. That is what takes us elsewhere with Mary, the mother of Duncan, the daughter to Gran. She is currently reading out of this manuscript. As she reads, we see something coming out of this mound. A hand breaches up, the flames coming and surrounding him. Because what they have just summoned to this world is Beowulf. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. You know, this is one of the reasons that I am such a big fan of Once in Future. Not only do we get Arthurian lore, but they are branching into all kinds of different lore, mythology, fables, fairy tales, you name it, they're trying to fit it into this story. Whether it be fairies, whether it be questing beasts, whether it be Arthur, his, his slew of knights, his round table of knights, or it be freaking Beowulf. And with the arrival of Beowulf, we are going to see this really turned up to a hundred. It's going to be very interesting to see how he is used, how he operates, and how they could possibly defeat him. With story arc number two now well underway for us, you guys know that I am 100% invested in this story. But let me know your thoughts, let me know your theories, if you would like to get completely caught up on everything going on with Once and Future, be sure to check out the link in my description, as well as the top of this video. It is gonna get you completely caught up on everything going on with this story. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by joining the channel membership. Much like Patreon, having five different tiers. From $1 to $50, from loyalty badges to getting free comics every single month. Not only does this help out the channel tremendously, but you are getting tons of perks in the process. Now, if you are unable to do this, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.